If you're saving money, you're doing it wrong. See, we've been told for so many years that we need to save our money. And while it is good and important to set aside some money for a rainy day, if something goes wrong with your car, if you need to repair something in your home, that is important. You shouldn't put all of your money into savings. See, there's two major groups. There's savings and investing. And savings is when you put your money into things that are very low risk. Things like bank accounts, CDs, money market funds. We're investing, you're putting your money into things with, that have a little bit of risk or a variety of risks involved. And the key difference here is if you put your money just into savings, you are missing out on millions of dollars that you could be earning if you just think about and smartly invest a good chunk of your money instead. And today I want to share with you that whole range of investments and savings vehicles that you could place your money into so you have a better understanding of that. And at the end, I'll reveal how much of a difference it really makes. And believe it or not, it makes a tremendous difference. And I'll show you that at the end. So first, you can put your money into a savings account or a money market account. And those are good. Right now, they're offering rates that I have not seen in my lifetime of 5%. That is great. But you could also be looking at putting your money into CDs. Now, CDs are where you lock your money up for a certain period of time, and you typically get a higher interest rate for locking that in. But today, if you look at it, if you lock it in for three, four, five years, you're actually going to receive a lower rate. Where a savings account today offers about 5%, a five-year CD might give you just 4%. Why is that? If you lock up your money longer, why are they giving you a lower rate? See, those rates are based upon expectations. So what does the market think interest rates will be in the future? And right now, the market thinks that interest rates are going to go back down. So banks and other institutions don't want to give you that higher 5% interest for all of those five years. And they compensate it by lowering that rate down to just 4%. So that's the basic world of savings. Most of us understand that pretty well. But now if you look at the other side of things, investing. This can be a bit scary because now you're actually taking on some risk. But there's a whole spectrum of investments that you could do. Things that are lower risk all the way up to things that are very high risk. On the lower risk side, you have corporate bonds. Bonds are rated by rating agencies to determine the level of risk involved. And if you look at corporate bonds, there's two major categories. One is investment grade bonds. The other one is speculative or junk bonds. The investment grade bonds today are offering about the same rates you can get for savings accounts, somewhere between five or maybe five and a half percent. Why are these rates so low? Well, they're so low because the risk is quite low. The risk of these corporate investment grade bonds actually losing money in any given year may only be 0.3 percent. So it's quite low. Now, let's look at the investment or the uh, the junk bonds. These bonds have higher rates of return. You might see a 6, 7, 8, or even 9%, or even 10% rate of return. Now, <clears throat> the trick here is that these bonds have a much higher risk of default. How high? On average, it might be about 2% per year. So overall, still fairly low when you think about it. So if you diversify your bonds and invest in a variety of bonds, then on average, 2% of them will go bad every year. So if you were going to get 9% rate of return, reduce that by the 2% default, you might be earning a 7% rate of return, which is not bad. But we can do better. So let's move beyond bonds. Let's move into stocks and equities. See, these are things like ETFs or mutual funds are often invested in these Equities. Now, they don't offer you any guaranteed rate of return or any promised interest rate. Instead, it's just 
whatever the business makes above and beyond their expenses. The, the, what we have to look at here is the historical rates of return for these kinds of investments. Many groups will say that the average rate of return of the stock market is 10%. Yes, this is true, but it's misleading for a couple of reasons. First, people can select the time window that they average the rates of return. And guess what? Some years are just better than other years. Many people will quote the average rate of return since about the 1950s. This seems sensible. That is a 10% average rate of return. But if you go all the way back to the 1920s, so 100 years of history, then you'll see the average rate of return is more like 8%. And then on top of that, average rate of return sounds like a very sensible metric, but it's not the actual rate of return that you get. See, for an average rate of return, if you were to invest 50 or invest in something and earn a 50% return in year one, but then lose 50% in year two, your average rate of return over those two years is zero. Up 50, down 50, so zero. But if you invest that $100, that first year, you actually earned $50. You're up to 150. The second year, you've learned, lost 50%, which means you lose $75, half of 150. So you actually, your invested amount at the end of two years is actually just $75. You've actually lost 25% over two years, which is why the average rate of return is not what you actually earn. If you look at your actual earnings over that those decades, they range between 6% on the low end if you look over the past 100 years to 8% on the high end if you look over the last 60 or so years. So that is stocks. Still pretty good. And this is where a lot of investors sit. In fact, a lot of my retirement savings are in ETFs that invest in a wide basket of these stocks. But you can actually do better. See, there's the world of alternative investments. And in this world, you can earn much higher rates of return. They include things like real estate. We are a real estate company and we offer an, inv an alternative investment that offers people 10% on their money. Again, this is much better, stronger interest rate. And we'll drop a link in the description below if you're interested to learn more. But you can do even better than that. You've got syndicated real estate deals. So if you're large enough to get into these real estate deals, you can earn 12, 13, 15% on your money. And then you have things like private equity that might earn 15, 16, 20, 25% on your money. So substantially more yet again. Now, private equity can be very risky. So you, when we talked about bonds, we talked about like a 2% default, right? For private equity, if they invest in 10 different companies, they may expect that six or seven of them fail completely and that they lose all of their money invested in those six or seven. They might have two or three that break even, but they might have one that does extraordinarily well. In fact, that one does so well, it makes up for all of the losses and then some to give people a 20% rate of return on your money. So that's the spectrum of the kinds of investments that you could actually earn a good rate of return into. But let's look at the impact of doing this. So firstly, let's imagine that you were to invest $500 a month for the next 40 years. If you were to invest that or save that just in a savings account, and you earned 5%, which is unlikely. You're not likely to stay there for the next 40 years. But let's say that it happens. You'll receive about $750,000 over those 40 years. Not too bad, but you can do way better. So let's imagine now that you put it in the stock market, and it actually gives you an 8% rate of return over those 40 years you will now have earned $1.7 million. 
So for a 3% increase, you are now over two times the return on your capital. Incredible. But you can do even better. If you put it in, put it with Norhart Invest, that investment fund that we offer, getting 10%, then you can expect to receive over 40 years about $3 million. That is four times the invested money that you put in with just saving, just saving it. But let's say you went the alternative investment route, private equity, syndicated real estate deals, and you earned 15% on your money. Now, over those 40 years, you'll have earned $12 million. Just imagine for a moment what, what you could do with $12 million. And this is 16 times more than you could get at just saving your money at that inflated 5% rate. It's incredible. So this is why you shouldn't just save your money. Yes, keep some savings available for you for a rainy day, but the bulk of your money should be investing it and investing it wisely. And if you do that over the next 40 years, you will earn a ton of load more money for yourself.